four-way buttons is one of the key technologies you'll find on Skyhawk controllers. On a live fly like this one, every single button is a four-way button, and it means that the button is capable of picking up which side of the button you're pressing. If you're pressing the left side, the right side, the top, or the bottom side. In the default cases, it just detects a button press, no matter which edge you're pushing, but you can use that edge detection to turn the button into something that is very close to an encoder. So no matter if I press top or bottom or left or right edge of these buttons, it's still selecting sources on program preview. If I'm turning this encoder knob, I'm going forth and back. I had this idea that I wanted to use four-way buttons in my audio control on this one. So if I go to the audio state that we enabled in the previous video, you can see that I'm, I'm toggling audio sources on and off. But what if I wanted instead to adjust the volume? That could be interesting. So what I'm going to do now is change the, the audio uh, adjustment of uh, with these buttons into something a little bit more radical. Now, um, since uh, we want to make this configuration to, uh, to yeah, we, we want to start out with one button first, okay? So follow me now. So what I want to do is to just make a clean slate, and then I'm selecting an action called Force HVC type. HVC means hardware component, okay? And that is a knob, a button, a fader, a joystick on a Skyhawk controller. That's a hardware component. And now we are forcing this button to become a pulsed component. A pulsed component is the generic way of describing such as an encoder. So when you turn it left, it is sending a number of pulses. When you turn it right, it's sending a number of negative pulses. So, uh, well, it's actually the other way. So right is positive pulses, left is negative pulses, and that is usually used to, to increase and decrease uh, values. That's what I'm now uh, forcing this to be. And when you do that for a four-way button, the, l the right edge becomes a positive pulse and the left ed edge becomes a negative pulse just out of the box. That's pretty cool. So uh, by doing that and then adding as the next action, audio volume for channel number one. Uh, yep. Saving. Now see what happens. See what happens. It says minus 60. So let's go to the ATEM switch and see what is right there. So, okay, for, for camera number one, I'm changing the value over here in the interface. You can see the value is following here. And now notice what's happening. When I'm pressing the left edge, it is adjusting the value down. When I'm pressing the right edge, it's adjusting the value up. And then there is something happening when I press the lower edge or the upper edge. Sometimes there is. Maybe I need to hold. Yeah, so it's kind of resetting. That corresponds to what happens for that action if you press and hold the encoder knob. Okay, um, guys, this is great. This is great. I want now to copy this to all the other actions. You have seen me do that many times before. But before I do, what if I wanted, instead of the, the right edge and the left edge, it to be the top and the bottom edge that does this? So this is something we call a transformation. So before I dive into copying this to the other channels, I'm now going to add something called a transform four-way behavior. And I need that transformation to be in the right order in the list. So I'm just moving it up after the force HVC type. I now transform the, f f uh, transform the behavior. And what I can do is I can rotate it. So I really want that left edge action, which uh, increases the volume, to be rotated um, for you, it would be this way. Um, I wanted to, to rotate it counterclockwise, so I just pick counterclockwise, and then the, the uh, audio volume is um, the, the next action. So I save, we are ready. So what happens now when I press the lower edge? You can see it's going down, I press and hold, it's repeating itself. When I, I do the upper edge, you can also see it in the software right there. When I, I press the upper edge, it's increasing the volume Okay, decreasing the volume on the lower edge simply because I transformed it as you just saw me do. Now, um, there was something like if I pressed and hold one of these edges, it is resetting. What happens if I press and hold here? Nothing really. Okay, and that is kind of uh, weird, isn't it? If I press and hold, then it's going from minus 60 dB to 0 dB. Maybe that's not exactly what I want. So I want to block out the left press. You can also do that in the transformation. So. I can now go, I, I rotate it counterclockwise, and what I want to do now is I want to, to block the left and the right input so it's only up and down that gets through and gives me the value adjustment. So now I did that, and uh, let me just get to another value. When I press and hold this, this side, 
nothing happens when I press and hold this side. Nothing happens. That's great. Exactly what I was looking for. So now I have a volume adjustment on a four-way button, basically doing what encoders would normally do. Isn't that amazing? I, all I need to do right now is really to copy this. Just simply copy, insert, change the source to number two, insert three, insert four, insert five, insert six, save, and voila! Now we have uh, the possibility of adjusting volume on all these buttons. Uh, you can see it in the software interface here as well. Maybe my fingers are blocking. I'm sorry about that. Okay, but you get the point. Four-way buttons for you guys. That's really exciting way you can utilize a single button as an encoder. Super powerful feature in Skyhawk controls, and generally you find them sprinkled all over the place. So um, 